hey, Linda, I read your post and I can definitely feel the despair as to what you're going through. And because it is such a general um, feeling, and sometimes this time of year too, you know, there's no sunlight, it's cloudy. It can just become a depressing time period for a lot of people. And um, it doesn't help when you've got a lot of things going on in your life. So instead of typing all of this out, because I really didn't want to type it all out, I figured I would just create this little video and then it probably won't even fit on the page because it'll be so big. So Linda, um, for you, and for everyone else who is in your position right now, we as humans, when we remember, when we daydream, when we think of things that are outside of where we're sitting or where we're sitting, where we're standing, um, it puts us in a different plane. It opens us up to our ability to see things in a different manner. And what people don't realize is that ability to daydream or that ability to just sit back and, hmm, you know, look around and people, you know, your eyes don't even blink. When somebody's off in that place and you watch, you're like, where were you just at? What were you just doing? You're off somewhere else. That is the place where we remember where we mix reality with desire with want with fantasy with wishes and sometimes that is a place that can make us sad because of where we are and we wish we could see someone again or we wish things were different and it only makes it worse sometimes and so when you envision something when you see it always know that if it's a past memory of happiness that you can no longer have it's going to be a memory of sadness at this point that's just the way it is because it was a happy time and you can't have it anymore so now you're sad that's normal we're not abnormal for having that thought process when you are thinking of something or daydreaming and you're having a conversation with someone who's no longer here it's probably a real conversation and that's what people don't understand is that plane of dimension is crossed with our minds and it's how I read I cross dimensions and the first reading I'll have to go okay I have to get I have to pull myself in I have to get into that place and then I have to open my eyes to those dimensions and so by doing that, you improve your ability to communicate with the other side. Now, what you also have to understand is that when you are communicating with the other side, you're also opening yourself up to everything else that's around you watching and listening. Linda's sad. Linda's not, she's having a hard time right now because she doesn't work and, um, there's a whole bunch of things, a bunch of garbage going on. So let's watch and see how this goes down. That's what they do. These little darker things over here, they don't help. They watch for the weakness. They're like the, the lions that are stalking their prey. They watch for the weakest one. And they like, oh, that one's got a broken leg. Let's see what it does. Okay, we're going to get that one first. And then they're going to go take it down. That's what these things do. And they are legit. They are real they are here to make sure that we do not follow our life path, our destiny, our contract, whatever you want to call it. And one of the hardest things, I am making a point um, to all this gibber, but one of the hardest things to do as a human is when we are nostalgic and when we are feeling really crappy, we feel like I want to have a sad day. I just want to curl up on a couch and watch a sad movie and cry. And that is healthy, actually. Because when you know that you are sad, when you know that you need a good cry, it's because you've got too much suppressed. You've got too much going on that needs to come out. And through tears, we're able to release some of that. Everybody knows that after a good cry and a hug and everything, you feel so much better. It's like, whew, 
well, I just got that all out of me. I like feel so much better. And I just, oh, I feel like ice cream now. And so when you remove all of that, when you get rid of all of that, it releases all of your tension and everything that's trying to hold up and like under the weight of pressure, all your organs, your diaphragm, your stomach, all of them just kind of like, that, was, that sucked. Do you know how long we held on to that crap? Like forever. Let's get some wine. Okay. And so releasing what you're dealing with right now is one of the first things you need to do. So just think, is there a sad movie out there? Let's say anybody that's watching this post a sad movie for everybody who needs to watch one. So um, do A Dog's Purpose, huge crier. Um, start watching This Is Us. You will cry for uh, three seasons entirely. Um, sad movies. Things, Dumbo. Dumbo will make you cry. Any Disney movie. Any Disney movie where everybody dies in a Disney movie. Um, pick a sad movie and watch it. The Color Purple, my most favoritest movie in the entire worlds of worlds. It's not like you go through the movie crying, but the last scene when God is trying to tell you something <laughs> makes me cry every time. Even right now, just thinking about it, you know, you, you get into that, like, that whole thing where you realize that something's going on in your life and God is trying to tell you something. And if you, can, if you don't get up crying, and clapping and singing and dancing, then you don't get it. Allowing yourself that time and that moment to just have a breakdown, you're controlling that. You're saying, I need this right now. I'm going to control the next hour or so, and I am just going to be a slobbery, boogery mess, so don't bother me. And then after that, you take that vulnerable moment, that moment where you are still, still open to possibility mingled with that sadness. You take that moment and you go, okay, I'm, I'm on my knees right now. I'm vulnerable. What do you want me to do? Because I'm ready. Because I can no longer stay face down in the dirt. I can't do it anymore. Please plant me some seeds of strength. I will reap them, I will harvest them, I will sow them. Show me the doors, I will open them because I can't do this anymore. And then in that visual moment, in that daydream moment, in that watch all of your guides walking over to you. Watch, see God, see Buddha, see Muhammad, see Christ, see Saint Germain, see whoever it is that you are looking at to pray walking up to you and putting a hand down to you and lifting you up off of the ground. And then just know from that moment on, you can't be sad. You can no longer be depressed. You can no longer feel sorry for yourself because right now you've got all of these angels around you. You have your spirit around you. You have the one that is going to carry you when things get difficult and then you have to choose right now to say no more I will not stand in my own way I will not allow myself to dwell on these moments that are earthly and that will pass and it is so easy for us to get caught up I, I have to do it myself when I am having a bad day and I'm hearing all the negatives from all these things that are like oh she's almost down let's keep going keep Pound her with negative thoughts and sad thoughts and bad thoughts and pound her with that. We want her down on the ground. <clears throat> when I start to realize that's what's going on, I'm like, whoa, 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 okay. As much fun as it is to curl up on a couch and watch a sad movie and everything else, y'all aren't going to do this to me again. As much as I want to be miserable right now, I'm not going to let you do it. It's so hard sometimes. It's hard because there are times when it just feels good to be a miserable wreck. And we want to call everybody and tell everybody about our misery. But let me tell you this. Every time that you call someone, post it on Facebook, when you have, let's just say, one bad moment and you tell everybody about it, 
and you post it on Facebook, it's not that that's a bad thing because you're looking for help. But just realize, remember who you are telling and try not to post it on Facebook. Because it's, it's like, for instance, this is why I produce this group. So that we are, as a group, your energies, your stories, the things that are you're dealing with and pain, they are not being spread out and dispersed throughout the world. <clears throat> They're staying within this group. This group keeps everything closed. And so when you tell people things and then Joe tells Aunt Mary and then Aunt Mary's like, oh my God, did you hear about Janet and all of her problems? Now you've got Joe and Mary and Aunt Janet, all of them all know about your problem and all of them have your little energy tentacle. And now Joe stretches your energy to Mary and Mary stretches it to Aunt Janet and now your energy is spread thin in God knows how many places. Reel that in. Okay, let go of that crap, Mary. Joe, give it back. Psh, pull it in. Whoever you told anything about, reel it back in. You've gotten what you needed from that source. Reel it back in. Bring it in. <clears throat> it makes you feel thinned out and helpless when everybody has your energy and they're running all over the world with it. So... When you bring something into the group, that's cool because these people within this air, within this group here on Facebook, they don't run wild with it. It's when you tell family and friends and, and the person at the grocery store knows now and the lady at the checkout and the person putting your shoes on for fitting and the dress lady, they all know, the butcher, the mailman. When you start throwing up your problems all over everybody, they take it with them. You've just given them a piece of you, okay? So don't do that. Reel your energies in. Who all knows what's going on in my life? Reel it in. Now you're creating a wholeness of your energy. You're bringing everything in. You're stripping. People may even call like, is everything okay? Are you all right today? No, I'm just going to pull myself together, literally. So the hardest thing is saying today, I am not going to dwell on this, that, or the other thing. Today, I have accepted all of my angels. I've, I know I'm standing now. I've got help and guidance that I cannot see, but I know it's there, and they're going to uphold and cause me accountable because I've asked for their help. I said I'm ready. So now I am accountable for my own situations. They will present you with doors. You can't sit back and go, oh, I don't, don't want to do that today. You can't do that now. Because you just told spirit and everybody else you pray to, you're going to walk through that door. And then you're going to get up and you're going to shower. You're going to do your makeup. You're going to get dressed. You're going to go to Walmart. You're going to go to Target. You're going to go to any store you want. And you are going to smile. Look everybody in the eyes that you run into and smile. Hi, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Oh my God, I love your shirt. I love your shirt. You are going to make yourself feel good by making others feel good. You're just going to try it. Get a taste of it. What it feels like to compliment someone who's least expecting it. Holding a door for everyone, making sure to say thank you. Just making everybody feel good is going to make you feel good. It pulls you out of a rut. Um, so if you are stuck in a funk, you have to ask for help to be pulled out of it. And when you do, you don't ask the humans around you because they're not really reliable. You can't always count on a human to be there to pull you out. But you can rely on spirit. And so envision your picture. Sometimes, and, and with this last thought, you know, it's really hard to see the picture when you're standing in it. So envision your big picture. You're in the frame. You can see it all around you and you look. Envision it right now out of the corners of your eyes. You can see the bottom of the frame all the way up around you. Step out of the picture, right over the frame and get out. And then what does the picture look like right now? What color is it? What color is the sky? What does the ground look like? Is it 
lush and growing or is it dried up and a tumbleweed goes flying by? What does your picture look like? One of the hardest things to do is to envision what it, you want it to look like because as a human, we always want to punish ourselves. I deserve that tumbleweed. You don't even understand what I've done alone. You know, people want to punish themselves. That dead tree right there, that explains my life. Don't justify garbage. Don't justify it. Don't judge yourself by placing something crappy in your life picture. Sit back and really go, if this were my picture, it would be made out of pink marshmallow fluff and there would be a non-circular spinning merry-go-round that just goes up and down because they make me throw up, okay? And the tumbleweeds wouldn't be tumbleweeds. They'd be giant fluffy pillows of sweet garbage that if I want to, I can pick up and eat. And over here, everybody is smiling. And there's my children and they're all happy and they love each other. There's my husband, there's me, there's a, whatever your picture is. Notice too, I just realized as I'm going through everything in my head about what I want my picture to be, the one thing that I, I did last was I was backing out was I went, oh yeah, prosperity. So I'd like a little pile of money right here. You know, nothing much, doesn't have to be lavish. Just to know that what I am working for, I'm earning, that I'm, I, that I'm taking care of things. So this all makes me happy. All these people who are smiling, my family, food. And try to step back in. If it still doesn't feel like, what did you forget? Who did you forget? Bring that into your picture. When you create something, when you visualize it, you manifest it. Your soul redirects and it's like a chemical change in the universe and all of a sudden now you've opened doors that were closed because you couldn't see them before. So just think about all of this stuff and just know that there are people out there who are clinically medically depressed, who need help, who have physical ailments and things going on that are just part of their life. But there are also solutions to help with those things, even if they are clinical and not just a passing depression. To think this way will help you to just get through the days in life that aren't as good as you want them to be. Know that you are never alone, never. And that even if you have closed the door on spirit spiritually you've yelled up I don't believe in you I hate you look what you've done to my life even if you have done that the doors are still going to present because truly in life no parent will keep the door shut on their child and I know as a parent that I'd always be willing to talk with my child regardless so expect the same from him and just have a good day and ponder all of this and pick yourself up and make yourself accountable by asking spirit to help lift you and then tell spirit that you are going to make a difference and make a change and to open the, to, to present those doors for you to open it's pretty amazing and don't judge yourself that's the last part don't judge yourself even if you just have a picture with you in a giant tire swing, it's happy. It's a happy thought. It's pretty cool. So if you see your picture and it looks kind of in dismay and disarray, redesign it. You guys have a great day and um, take care. Be blessed. Remember that.